A family on a mission to build and move their dream Riverside mansion. I don't like all the cracking and banging that's going on. Will the house survive? A treacherous tilt into the fast flowing water? We could have a catastrophic failure where the building could fall off the dock. And a dangerous tug downriver? It's like throwing a big block of concrete. <laughs> Hauling this floating fortress will be nothing short of one massive move. The Fraser River, the largest in British Columbia. It's along this beautiful but busy waterway that Graham and Sharon Harkley and their two kids, Grace and Evan, dream of living. They hope to escape their current home in Ladner, which is landlocked. I've looked forward to being on the river for years. I've always dreamed of being able to jump in my boat and zoom off whenever I wanted to. And uh, we can go kayaking and fishing and stuff like that together right out of our front door. I want to move to the river because I love it there and with all the wildlife, there's a whole lot more than here. So I think it'll be fun. But the family don't want to live along the river. They want to live on it in a unique house that floats. And they found a perfect location just a mile from their current home. We'll have this magnificent view that we're so looking forward to seeing. And it also has a wonderful dock that we can have friends and family over just to enjoy some summer evenings. The house will be built on land at IMF, a company specializing in floating structures. If anyone has the skill to build and launch a huge aquatic house, it's Matt Tobias's crew. A standard single family home is about 100 tons. And we're uniquely uh, situated here in Vancouver that we can actually pick up very large items uh, so we can build bigger structures. The construction site sits along the Fraser River. Once assembled, Graham and Sharon's floating mansion must embark on a treacherous seven mile journey to reach the mooring. The team has to guide the house down this mighty waterway with a tugboat. It'll be a hazardous trek with fast flowing water, sunken sandbanks, and boat traffic. Sharon is worried about this perilous plan. It could tip over. It, that's a reality. It, it could. Um, perhaps it doesn't float as well as we think it might. Such a grand project comes with an equally grand price tag. Buying the mooring will set Graham and Sharon back $400,000. Building the house, $240,000. Moving the house downriver, $80,000. Bringing the grand total for this ambitious project to $720,000. No one knows if the house will even survive such a dangerous journey. It's a huge sum of money for this family to risk. In the end, we're gonna have this fantastic view, but in the meantime, we gotta build the place, we gotta get it in the water, which is a huge challenge, we gotta get it down here safely, and we gotta get it tied up to this dock. So in the next few months, it's gonna be a lot of work. First challenge, work out how to make the huge home float. The team need to design a special foundation that's strong and rigid, but is buoyant. They'll use huge blocks of styrofoam. Steel rods hold the blocks together, while a layer of waterproof concrete will make the base rigid. The frame of the house can be built on top of this floating foundation. This way, the house should be sturdy enough to survive the river journey to its new home. Matt's crew cut 130 cubic meters of styrofoam to size and tie them together with steel rods. Good. Graham's taken charge of project managing, so he's thrilled to see work start. This is an amazing day for me. I've been waiting for uh, months, years for this to happen. Finally, they're pouring the concrete. There's no turning back now. They pour 60 tons of concrete into the mold. It's all that will stand between the house and the dirty riverbed. I wanted to have the best float possible. <laughs> if you don't have a good float, you don't have a good house. I've got a million things going through my mind. In nine days, the house will be framed. We'll have inspections done. And so it's going to be a quick process from here. It'll look like a house all of a sudden. And two weeks later, look like a house it does. Now that you actually see the structure, it's uh, just exhilarating to have it happening. 
Graham's particularly pleased with one feature, which will allow the family to soak up the river views. We're on the second floor of the house now, overlooking the Fraser River, and the bigger the windows we could fit in, the better, so that's why we had to put this steel frame in there. It's exciting, this is a great room, I think. It's turned out well. Don't get too excited, Graham. Your big windows might give you a great view, but they're gonna cause one almighty weight problem. The walls around the heavy windows need to be reinforced with steel beams. But all the windows are on one side of the house. Launch now, and he could have a titanic disaster on his hand. So, he must counteract the concentrated weight of the windows by adding concrete to the foundation on the opposite side. If he gets it right, when the house launches, it should quickly right itself and not tip in any direction. They ease the huge windows into place. Thousands of dollars worth of glass hang in the balance. One slip could result in a costly disaster. The windows will provide a great view, but they've resulted in one heavy house. Coming up, the heavy house gives Graham an expensive headache. They say it's gonna cost around $20,000. Will the house sink or swim? We could have a catastrophic failure where the building could fall off the dollars. In British Columbia, the 65-ton floating foundation has been built for the Harkley family's dream home. The frame of the house has been assembled on top and heavy windows installed in one wall. Whoa. Looks good. You never know what they're going to do until you actually see it, but I like it a lot. Four weeks into the project, they attach the sidings. The family are hard at work adding the finishing touches. Keep going. Go more. You're going to pass it. Good. Keep going higher. They aim to launch the house in just a week's time. With the whole family helping out, they should be ready soon. There's a whole lot of work to do still. But the additional weight of the huge windows is about to cause big problems for the project. There's no way of getting out of that. Graham receives bad news. The water at their okay. mooring is too shallow for the heavy house. It will scrape the riverbed. I just got a call from the, the Port Authority. Basically, I got the word that there wasn't enough depth at low tide for the house to sit. Uh, to stay off the bottom. So what we've ag agreed to is that we're gonna take six to eight feet out of the whole water lot, which is approximately a thousand cubic meters of soil. And for that, that's gonna take about a day, and they say it's gonna cost around $20,000. Now that's gotta hurt. You know, I could have spent 20 grand on a new boat, which would have been better. It takes eight days for Graham to hire a crew and excavate the mooring. We're hoping that this is the last obstacle and we'll keep our fingers crossed that, that is the last one and our house will be here soon. With the new site prepared, the move can finally begin. First challenge, launch the house. But it's been built away from the riverbank. So they must roll it to the water's edge on tracks and special wheels called dollies. IMF engineer Bob is concerned about keeping the dollies in line. If they're not pinned down correctly, when the wheels are traveling along the tracks, they could hit the butt end of the track and actually slide the track forward. If Dolly hits a track, that means that you have to pick up the building to be able to relocate the track again, right? So it's a bit of a pain in the butt to do that. Whenever you're ready, Bones. The 110-ton house is finally on the move and inches forward. Bob's team must keep a constant watch on the dollies. They reset the tracks to line the house up perfectly with the dock side. As they're lifting it, they're making sure that they're keeping the thing as level as possible without twisting it. If we twist it, of course, we can go ahead and, and break the back of the float. The house is poised to make the plunge.
The whole family arrives to watch their house take to the water, hopefully like a duck. Years, we've been doing this stuff for years, working on this, and uh, finally it's gonna go in the water. Engineer Bob Field knows the risks of maneuvering such a heavy house. If a catastrophic crack started, we would we would have to replace the float. I mean, right? if you took that thing and twisted that, that, that thing so the back is broken on that float, you'd have a serious, serious problem, right? The house is extremely heavy, weighing more than 100 tons. Controlling its launch into the water will be a real challenge. Go too fast, and the house could hit the water too hard. For a controlled launch, Bob must build an additional set of rails to guide the wheels, making sure they are perfectly aligned as they descend into the water. He'll have to anchor the house to heavy trucks. These should ensure the building doesn't run wild as it takes to the water. But these moves don't always go to plan. I heard a story about this. They put it over the edge and uh, the tow trucks started to get pulled into the water until they started letting the cord out. They line up the trucks. Now the precarious launch can begin. Okay, here's to many happy years on a new houseboat. Get ready. You ready? Watch out. Woo! Very excited. Very, very excited. As the front dollies reach the water's edge, the pressure mounts. I'm totally confident in their, in their abilities, but I'm still like, until it actually happens, you never know, right? The house is now dangling over the water, not the sort of position Sharon wants to see it in for long. I didn't realize how steep that angle would be. The rear dollies inch over the dockside. This is the most perilous part of the process. When the trailing dollies are over the edge, we have the most load imposed onto the trucks, and, and that's when we could have a, have a failure. I don't like all the cracking and banging that's going on. If the trucks were to break loose, we could have a catastrophic failure where the building could fall off the dollies. I like the fact that it's still standing like that and not like tipping over more like that though. I haven't seen any cracks in the windows yet, that's good. <laughs> Look, let's get in touch the water. Any minute. Oh my God. Nice. Here it goes. It's in the water. It's starting to float. It feels good. I just want I want her to come up just a little bit. Oh there. There. Yeah, yeah it's coming. Coming up. Will the house float level? Is it floating flat that way? And survive a dark and dangerous river journey? There's going to be some more maneuvering to be done here tonight. It's not all over with yet. In British Columbia, the Hartley family have built their dream floating home on land. Whenever you're ready, Bones and launch the 110-ton monster into the river. Let's get in touch the water. But until the home floats freely, the family has no idea whether the engineer's calculations are correct. If it tilts, it could sink. I'll be waiting with bated breath for sure. They unhook the winch line. Oh, it's floating now. Look at that. <laughs> Is it floating flat that way? Yeah, it looks pretty good. That way's flat, that way's almost right. Oh, yeah, baby! That's what I was looking for. It wasn't coming up, but it's slow. It's so heavy, right? It's amazing. And But the, you know, if you look along the concrete lines, you can see that it's almost perfectly level. It's very flat, so I'm really happy. Another successful launch. After 25 years and 200 launches, it feels excellent every time. But the house still faces a seven mile journey along the fast flowing Fraser River. Tug captain Brent Mowat must bring the house under control fast. I've towed logs, barges, boats, gazebos. I've towed everything. <laughs> it might be a floating home, but that doesn't mean it's tough enough to survive a seven mile river journey. It's like throwing a big block of concrete. <laughs> you know, they don't uh, respond very well and they're uh, not very maneuverable. It's slow. 
our friend Brent is got, hooking up to it, and off he goes. Look at this. It's taking off now. He is a character, that Brent guy, but I trust him. He's really good at what he does. All Graham and Sharon can do now is watch from the shore as their $240,000 investment sails out of sight. The house faces speedy river traffic and floating debris, all as night begins to fall. The logging industry uses the Fraser River to transport wood to the sawmills downstream. The logs are usually tied together, but sometimes strong currents can loosen them. Often stray logs absorb water, sink, and become stuck in the riverbed. These obstacles, called deadheads, are only just visible above the waterline and are extremely destructive. So Brent must keep a constant lookout, weaving a safe path down this already busy river. You're trying to uh, maneuver stuff uh, around logs and debris, and uh, they're uh, very unpredictable when you're towing them like that. There's going to be some more maneuvering to be done here tonight. It's not all over with yet. Time is ticking away fast, and with the family waiting for him, Brent can't afford to let up speed. But darkness is falling rapidly, making it even tougher to spot the deadly deadheads. Oh, they're all through the river here, and at nighttime you can't see them and everything else. The fast-moving river traffic isn't helping. C-SPAN Greg Renegade, thank you very much for the slow bell there. You gotta ask them to slow down or everything gets wet in there. And then the customer's real mad. So is the insurance guy. There's still a mile to go. And in the pitch black, Brent will need to keep the house safely on course. The family waits nervously at the morning. He just went around the long way. I guess he's worried about his boat being too deep. Uh, there's a bit of a sandbar that runs across here. With a party prepared, Graham is anxious. Half an hour from extreme scariness because when it comes here, it's the fact that it's so heavy. As it gets close, you can't stop it once it's coming in. Steering the 110-ton building into the dock will be a huge challenge. There's no ship's wheel on this house. If Brent mistimes his approach, the house could end up on a collision course. So he must slow down well before he nears the pier. He's relying on guide boats and eagle-eyed spotters to help carefully steer the house into the dock next to its neighbors. 11 p.m., Brent's tug sails out of the shadows. Look at that thing, it's so close and yet so far. And slows down just in time. But parking the house at the pier will be an even bigger challenge. Coming up, can the crew guide the house safely into the dock? Stop, stop. In British Columbia, the Hartley family's monster home has been tugged down the river. Look at that thing, it's so close and yet so far. And arrives at their mooring. They've waited years for this, and their friends have raced for ringside seats to watch the nerve-wracking finale. But first, Graham needs to pull the huge home safely into the dock. It's a tight squeeze in the pitch black. Yeah, we gotta come in this way a bit more, you guys. What's happening with that piling over there? Are we gonna pass it or? But is the space just too small for the huge house? Oh, no. The roof hits a piling. It doesn't sound good. All right, let's go check this side out. I didn't really take into account the fact that I had overhangs and I had pilings here. Yeah, that's too close. But it's not quite as bad as it sounded. Oh, I think we can fix that. We'll just bang that out. It'll be no problem at all. There's not far to go now. It's going to come this way about two feet. Okay, slow it down. That's good. Yeah, that's perfect. Leave it there. The house finally floats into position. 
They tie it to the pier with ropes. It's tight. It's very tight, yeah. Good job. Thank you. Very nice. Look at that. Everyone, let's go on. Wow, Grant, thank you. I'm Graham's wife, Sharon. Hi, Graham. Thank Grant. you so much. You're amazing. Come on in, everybody. It's all the best holidays wrapped up into one big present, and um, even though we have a lot of work ahead of us this month, trying to get it finished so we can move in. It's going to be so exciting and we're just all keyed up and the adrenaline's flowing and it's just really fun. Two months later, Graham and Sharon and their children are finally living on the river in their gorgeous family home. We've all worked together on this and come together as a, as a team and pulled it off. So. We're all pretty proud of ourselves and excited that, that it's actually working. There were moments of stress, for sure, but that just gets your adrenaline going. We're getting to the point where we'll be able to just sit back and relax and enjoy it. With everything finished, the results speak for themselves. It is stunning. This just has been more than I could have dreamt of, so it's beautiful. Just having the expanse to look at is just uh, worth everything that we've gone through. And so it's really kind of my perfect place, really. Thanks to Graham's determination, the builders, and the tug crew, their floating fortress is now a Dream River home.